I'm kind of sad our eight-week journey is coming to an end, but how good's fantasy rugby, though? It really makes you hook into every game being played and definitely added to the World Cup experience for me. Taking a quick look back on round seven, well done to those who captained Will Jordan instead of Mark Talia. That would have bagged you an extra 123 points. Also, if you brought in Richie Maunga, his 79 would have given you a pretty good boost overall. If you're in either of those camps, just know I'm sitting here very jealous. And let's just acknowledge, fantasy-wise, that Springboks vs England game was dreadful. Mostert and Snyman top scoring for the entire game with 32 points. Definitely turned into that tactical kickathon we were sort of expecting, and South Africa weren't really able to go after the game like they did against France. Anyways, moving on to this round, all four teams are still playing and scoring. England really are the Achilles heel to this round though. If they come out with the same game plan they had against the box, it'll be a fantasy nightmare. You would think though, being the third versus fourth playoff, they might be inclined to score a few more tries, and Argentina can definitely create that frantic environment. With the Springboks and All Blacks game, the last two times they versed each other, they were really open-ended running contests. The first time they came across each other this year, the All Blacks completely blew the Springboks off the park in the first 20 minutes. And in the friendly before the World Cup started, the Springboks sort of did the exact same back to the All Blacks, really gassing them out in that first 20 minutes before taking the game away from the All Blacks. I think this one will be more of a seesawing scoreline and great for fantasy rugby. Before I go through my selections for this round, just quickly, one thing I'm really conscious of, the Springboks 40 to 50 minute substitutions. These can be an absolute fantasy killer, which is why you'll see some hesitation from me as we go through these. Looking at the outside backs, Will Jordan and Mark Talia are definitely in for me. Two of the high scoring backs, and the All Blacks will depend on both of these guys a lot in the final. Especially if the Springboks decide to kick the skin off the ball, these two guys will benefit the most, expect a few extra tackle busts, possibly even line breaks. We do still have the same issue as last week, the third outside back dilemma. You'd like to think Cheslin Colby or Kurtley or Runza are due for some pretty big games after being relatively quiet last week. I kind of like Kurtley or Runza who will be matched up against Mark Talia. Could see a fair bit of upside. Now while Talia is an absolute beast in attack, he can have some defensive misreads and be a bit dodgy under the high ball. So that's why I'm fancying a Runza. I'm also tempted to have a punt on Buffelli. Looked pretty good against the All Blacks last weekend and should have the goal kicking. In the centers, you just have to go with Geordie Barrett. 17 tackles against Argentina and has that attacking upside. A really solid base. Rico Ioane for me is probably the next best center to choose. Usually it's either him or Geordie Barrett that will get those extra attacking stats though. I'm not too keen at all on any of the Springboks unless they roll the dice on Lucanio M or Andre Estheisen, but I don't think they'll change from Diolande and Creole. It's a winning combination at the moment. Part of me really thinks... Manu Tuolungi, probably playing his last World Cup game, goes out there and plays the house down. Bit risky, but he's one of those guys, if you want to make up an extra 40 to 50 points and go against the grain, he's a nice point of difference for this weekend. At fly half, it's really a question out of Richie Maunga or Owen Farrell. For Richie Maunga, being in a final, he could be conservative, but at the same time, he's definitely a big game player, which is why I'll be picking him. My only hesitation with that though is, does Farrell go out there with a nothing to lose mindset? have one of his best attacking games for England. I genuinely think he does, but will there be that much of a difference between him and Richie? At scrum half, it's pretty slim pickings. Aaron Smith's been the pick of the bunch. Usually wouldn't want to use up one of the All Blacks on this position, given its low ceiling, but you can almost guarantee Faf and Reinhardt share minutes, and there's like a 30 to 40 point gap between Aaron Smith's average and the England and Argentinian scrum halves. So I'm thinking the difference between, say, Cody Taylor and Jamie George will hopefully be less than the gap between Aaron Smith and the next best scrum half, if that makes sense. In the back row, you can't not have Artie Sarveya. He has scored 60 plus points three games in a row now. Now, who to pick in the other back row positions is quite the conundrum. I think the Springboks will get through a ton of tackling, but time on the field is really the question mark. Because of that, I'll go with Benel from England, and just for the fun of it, probably back one Martin Gonzalez one last time. If you need to save a credit or two, Issa is a great option in the back row, and if you really want to point a difference, jump on Shannon Frizzell again. Absolutely tore up the Springboks in the Rugby Championship, and has that really high ceiling. In the second row, it's pretty interesting this week. I suggest waiting till the end to pick your second rowers, and seeing what combination you can put together. I had about 16 credits left, so I went with a Toje and Etzebeth, but... You might want to cheap out on Petty and Kremer and see if you can upgrade somewhere else. There's plenty of options there, but something about Brody Retallick just really stands out for me this game. Another big game player for the All Blacks, if he's listed to start, he would be dynamite, I reckon. I just wish I could put another New Zealand player in. I've got a really good feeling about it. There's a lot of good options in the hooker position this week. 
Funnily enough, none of the starting hookers, well, most likely starting hookers, have scored a try all tournament. Can't go with Benembi because the All Blacks small defense is too good. Don't want to go with Cody Taylor because I'm locked up with All Blacks. Jamie George plays huge minutes, but is the most expensive. So all roads lead to Julian Montoja at seven and a half credits. Highest average of all the hookers in the tournament, and I'm backing him to break the drought this weekend. In prop, Gash Low, it actually looks like Gallo, has become a no-brainer restarting. Dirt cheap and pretty solid scores every week. I think Genj will start for England, and I really want to roll the dice on him one more time. They'll probably keep kicking the ball away though, but if they do, for some reason, playing nothing to lose footy, he'll see a huge uptick in his scores. Other props I don't mind the look of, Kitchoff if he starts or Malherba. Just in case the box scrum does a job against the All Blacks, they really gain momentum towards the end of that game against England, so you never know. Anyways, here's how the side's shaping up. Teamless dependent, pretty happy with it for the most part. Yes, there's not many spring box, but because I think they'll do plenty of tackling and minutes on the field, that massive concern. Like, in all honesty, I'd happily cop any one of these other players I've selected scoring less points if, say, Dutoy or Bonambi somehow outscore them in less minutes. Captaincy is still on Mark Talia at this stage. Other good options definitely Will Jordan. Have to use a super kicker booster this week. Probably going to go with Richie Maunga, even though he's been kicking at a pretty low percentage for his standards this World Cup. Kind of annoying that there's not really any kicker standing out. If France was still in, Ramos would have been a great option. Farrell would have been good. Same with Buffelli if they were in the main final. But being in the third versus fourth game, not sure if they'll take the points as much. Just my gut feeling. Let me know how your team gets on. Ask me any questions you want below in the comments. And best of luck to you all in this final round. Thanks, guys.